so much for coming uh, and having a chat with me. I'm Lizzie, I'm one of the co-curators of the exhibition Perfume, A Sensory Journey Through Contemporary Scent. And you two are some of the perfumers in the exhibition. So I've got Mark Buxton here and I've got David Seth Maltz here. Um, Mark, David. you're... Yeah, hi. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. There you go. They've just literally just been plonked down. That's true. Here. Um, true. So, though I, though I, though I know you. <laughs> so David's here all the way from New York, and Mark from France. So thanks for coming over for the start of the exhibition. Um, we are going to have a chat about experimentation, experiments of all kinds in fragrance. And uh, overall, I want to ask the question, is perfume still experimental? Is it still exciting? Is it still filling you with energy and fizz and froth? Or are there certain things about it that you think need to change or that are getting stale? So what I want to ask you first of all is, What's been exciting you lately in the lab? What have you been dabbling with as a, as a recent idea that you think is very exciting and experimental? Mark, I'm going to ask you. I can't see your eyes, which is Nobody there. sees oh, them. Nobody sees no. them. Are they in there? <laughs> they are. They're beautiful, by the way. I, we'll, we'll get the Still glasses blue. off later. Still blue. Uh, yeah, what have you been working on? What am I working on? Lots of things, by the way. Well, which one makes you, uh, gets the adrenaline going or gets you excited? Well, perhaps I should start uh, and say f from the beginning that I only work for niche. So niche in general has something very interesting, something going on, something new, exciting. I've made a, a series for films where I try to capture the, the information, the energy of a film and to diffuse that in a cinema. Uh, that was rather interesting. I love working for hotels as well. Why, why hotels? Well, I'm not going to say that I'm not working like for the uh, Jolly or the Novotel around the corner. <laughs> They're like more like concept <laughs> yeah. um, hotels. Uh, for example, I'm working for one at the moment in Iceland, uh, one in or two in uh, Ireland, uh, which are very concept, the style, uh, everything it's like. And they want to try and capture their smell, their odor, their identity of the hotel, the image, and etc. This I find rather interesting. And, um, and are you creating perfumes for the skin for, the, for them or something that is in the hotel? It depends. Uh, okay. There is one, for example, uh, something going on in Hamburg. They want a fragrance first and then they would like to adapt their signature fragrance into the whole uh, miniature line for the hotel. And there are others which just say, what would this smell like for you? What is our identity? What, can you give us an example? So Iceland, what's that? Is that literally turn our hotel into a smell or did they give you? Because one of the things that uh, people have found really fascinating about your fragrance in the exhibition, uh, the Comme de Garçon 2, is they're loving this swimming pool of ink thing. They just, people keep talking about it. We've got a table in the exhibition which is filled with black beads and these black balls as a kind of oblique look on it. And they love the idea that a brief could have been that. Lots of people don't think that a fragrance brief could be that lateral. Well, so I, what's, I, what, what did the guys at Iceland say? <clears throat> they give you some images of the hotel, uh, the decor, what it's like. Uh, for example, in, in this hotel in Iceland, they work a lot with leather and different kinds of wood. It's very stylish, but very natural at the same time. Very zen, very decor, very... So, actually I don't need much. I think the less information you give me, the more you can get out of me, because that's when your creativity jumps in. The less the better. Yeah. And you I... both, both of you generate your own briefs as well. So you take a brief, but you've also got your own fragrance house. Um, you've got your own fragrance house, DS and Durga. So do you prefer just having nothing and you go to town or do you need something like a word, a line, a sound? Which I think it works better with number two. I mean, of course, like, because fragrance is like limitless, right? So when you have someone's direction and you know, what one person thinks of something versus the other. So I, I, I actually insanely research a place. He might be saying he's doing the same thing rather than someone giving him the information. But if it's the hotel, 
we're going into like figure out the the history of the space and all of the materials like what was in this region what grows in that region what are the cultural aspects of this region because that comes through eventually in into into it in some way you might make like a hundred studies of it and then boom it's just one one of the fragrances but the more information i think again it's it's my own research though someone can tell me but you know you want you want to get into the nuts and bolts of a place yeah and and mark when you're doing something for your own brand your own fragrance house do you have to kind of pretend you're some do you give yourself a brief or do you go out and say to people like mm, give me something no that's 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 very different i started um a scrapbook like um, 30 years ago and in this scrapbook I have images it can be a person it can be a situation it can be a room where something happened or an odor which I think wow this is interesting well, I can get this and that yeah. together and I just scribble it down and uh, the next step will be that I would bring out something totally different uh, a new concept uh, new bottle everything and uh, but I'm working on that that would be for yeah. for next year but is skin still where it's at with fragrance so you're making things for your perfumes but also fragrances for spaces one of the things people complain about is oh there's too many perfumes like what am I putting on my skin anymore is do you think that experimentation is now best placed on thinking what can fragrance do that's not on the skin that, that's part of think, it David? yeah I mean I think that's part of it I think that the the first thing you're saying about there being too many fragrances, that's the truth of the world. There's too much information, there's too many books, there's too many, everything. It's, it's all overwhelming. It's up to you to like navigate. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that the perfume or the music or the books is all crap or anything. It's just you, 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 gotta, you gotta figure it out. But of course, pushing the boundaries of what we do with fragrance is huge. Like I'm, I'm passionate about pushing perfume towards art. You know, I have those two shows uh, this summer, right, where I'm scenting the spaces but you can also like experience the oil as it is, you know, or, and they go along with the themes of what the, the specific shows in the galleries are. And, you know, it's just me, it's not like my company, it's not a brand, it's, it's just like the essence of the scent that goes with that, you know, and I don't know if you know about this thing, but for El Cosmigo, for this scent, when we launched it, I went down there, I had a scent machine built, it's a centrifugal fan, and you're pressing uh, a foot pedal and it goes into the fan and it's, you. I was performing with my music project. So live, like sort of blending these 16 accords that I had that goes along with the music that are these like kind of endless landscapes, but it's in a teepee. And so when you're pressing on this thing, within eight seconds, everyone can smell the same thing and you can blend it together. So I think concepts like this where you're starting to show, people are understanding the power of fragrance right now, right? And it's sort of, I always say like the touchstone of our generation is, is food. Like my mother's generation, everyone knew the new like Rolling Stones record, right? Now everyone knows who like Alan Ducasse is or you know, any, any of the, the star chefs. I don't know if perfume will ever get there exactly, but being ingredient based and as, as an artistic expression, I think it's, it's pushing new boundaries and, and the two ways you do that is to push it towards art and also to like educate the masses of what they're smelling, how it's made a little bit, you know. I'm writing a book with a chef about how we translate landscape to flavor and fragrance because it's showing really, you know, we could take this table and what's on it right now and make an accord and a scent and describe that this was based on this table and you, you use materials that smell like this color and this material. I'd like, um, can the glasses. we get the, yeah, can we get Tortoise shell, there you yeah. go, yeah. Perfect. Um, for, for anyone watching who's not kind of feeling really familiar with fragrance. Given that you're starting to create more for artistic projects or conceptual pieces that might not be fragrances for the body, um, but they're not room fragrances necessarily either, they're not necessarily candles. Like this space where it's fragrances for installations, how do you think differently about structure and composition? Is it any different to making a fragrance that someone's gonna spray on their body? Think there's more liberty that's for yeah, sure of course there's less yeah. regulations it's the category yeah. is you, you know. don't necessarily need the same structure as well like the you yeah. know the tête carfond that you have this diffusion and it lasts yeah yeah, yeah exactly it's, so do you it, find the traditional so with fragrance just I mean, this is very obvious stuff but fragrance we often talk about top notes middle notes bass notes you're talking about something that's seamless that takes you on a kind of journey over the hours of wearing it Nowadays we have more linear fragrances, which means they're, 
there are some uh, fragrances that might smell the same all the way through. Do you find the traditional... Yeah, eccentric molecule. Yeah. Bling, yeah. bling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of the uh, fragrances in the show, which has been wildly popular. But do you find the classical structures that you uh, look to to create, do you find them restrictive? Like, do you think, oh, why have I got to have this? Base. Why do I have to do the top middle No, there's no have to. We're free but, from that for sure. Yeah, I you suppose know? you two are, but some perfumers aren't. No, right? but listen, look, look at what you're talking about, Dominique Ropian, like one of the best perfumers in the world, but makes like big, gigantic, classic. So structure, I don't know about him, but structure doesn't scare me and classics don't scare me. I personally love to wear like some things that are old fashioned or of an era myself that I make or very simple accords of, you know, pure sandalwood oil or vetiver or, or whatever it is. It's, it's, in, it's in your mind. If your mind is like creative, you can work, you can give me only 20 materials. If I give you only 20 materials right now, he's going to make something amazing because it's his mind. And say, you know, and if I say, make me a fougere and use these 20 things, you can. And we both have the same 20 raw materials. Your work would be totally different to mine. Totally, yeah. Totally different. Yeah, of course. That's what I always find is interesting. It's, you know? it's amazing. It's, it's an interpretation of something. So we should have done a kind of live cookery show where we just put. That would be funny, five right? Five to make it. Yeah. You could yeah. do it. Five yeah. is pushing it. This one has <laughs> always been my wish because there are so many bullshitters, you know, in this industry. Right. You know, perfumers, which call themselves perfumers and call themselves great perfumers, stuff like that. Mm. And everybody sits behind a bloody computer, pressing on a button. They have ninety-five percent of the latest latest launch which came out because they have the analyzers and stuff like that and they try and make this Lego kind of perfume so they take the top note of this because it's a bestseller we put the heart of this it's a bestseller and the form of this is a bestseller so we have three bestsellers together so it should become the best best bestseller yeah yeah they're just putting things together and perhaps rounding it off a bit and say well that's it that's my creation it has nothing to do with creativity nothing to do with perfumery and just what you said before I would love to put whoever you want, you can line them all up, 10 of us, with a white sheet of paper yeah. and a theme, or brief, call it whatever you want, say, Tortoiseshell sunglasses. You have there we go. one hour or two hours, whatever you want, yeah. do it. Yeah. And That's it. Why? I would love to do this, the challenge. I totally agree. Mm. I need the materials though, because for me, I, I still do it live. I, I like to be able to, in real time, uh, Otherwise, you end up making, like, if you're doing it with a computer and sending it to your lab, it's just like you're getting, like, so many versions of it. Whereas I like to be like, oh, right then and there, this needs more of that. Why don't we see more perfumers just, I don't know, with a webcam in their studio, in their lab? Why don't we see the process? Because it's really hard to talk about creative process. I mean, in any art form, you, don't a, you can't necessarily articulate there's, there's it. There's a lot of reasons for that. But why wouldn't, like, Mark, if you were given the opportunity to David, like, if we said, let's let's blend live, can people see? Do you think that that is where we can really see experimentation? Because that the perfumery still happens away, it and look we sexy. can't. That's the problem. Like a guy, like what I'm doing with like droppers into bottles doesn't look cool. It's like, it, you know, you might think the lab wall where all the stuff is looks cool, but it's not like, uh, you make something that's a badass, that's like a you know, rock and roll or whatever, but it doesn't but look that cool way. what's cool is you doing and talking us through it, if you can. So we, uh, this is the thing, the industry, there's all these layers of crap and the glamour, and this is what perfumery looks like when it doesn't at all. But Keys to the castle there, like you're, you're yeah. telling someone like lots of stuff, it's... Yeah, but... The, don't you think that, I mean, people who are coming to this exhibition are lapping up, they want so much information, they want to learn. If you could talk them through what you're doing, what you're experimenting on. It's difficult because, um, as I just said, yeah. the idea is in your head, you write it down on a piece of paper, then you go into the lab, you mix it, and so what's attractive or what's sexy about that, you know? Totally. It's very banal, see it, what it, I mean? Exactly, it doesn't look, and also, no. it might look like it's so easy. A, yeah, lot, a lot of people think like, oh, also. perfume, you just, yeah. you, oh, you just take these things, boom, boom, you can like do it yourself. Yeah. It's as if I said to you like, oh, like here's a bunch of instruments, go write a symphony. You know, let's say you're, yeah. let's say you're a, a rock and roll musician and, and I give you, a, I'm like, well, take the violin and take the clarinet, and make a symphony, write it out. You know, like make, making a symphonic fragrance is, is very difficult and people think, and because it, it looks easy. If it was us live there doing it, oh, that's not it, let me add more of this, boom, boom, boom. But it's because you have like 10,000 hours experience or whatever it is to know that, the, exactly. the, that you can just open that channel and let the stuff come out, you know? Okay, fair enough. And when it comes to self-taught uh, perfumers, so one of the kind of conversations we've been having is who can be a perfumer? And it, are self-taught perfumers 
and their rule-breaking tendencies or rule-bending tendencies adding energy and excitement to the industry. Are some self-taught perfumers, um, do they know what they're doing? Is this, is this where the new direction is coming from? Mark, you're very much classically trained and Absolutely. you are, as you've said, you're intolerant of people who call themselves perfumers and aren't. David, you're a perfumer who taught himself. Like, Mark, to be blunt, is David a perfumer? I met David for the first time today. It's true, so he doesn't yeah. know. And, and I, I, I don't know. I never yeah. smelled anything from you. You say we have yeah. something at nose, for example. Right, but right, right. I, I don't recall then. this, so uh, I don't know. But yeah. they are. Let me put it like this. If David makes his own stuff, that's one thing. Or to that, he yeah. trained himself, he became perfumer, and he can get stuff together, that's one thing. What I'm saying is... I can't stand people which have nothing to do with perfumery, which call themselves perfumers, and they hide themselves behind their brand name. I don't want to give any names here because I don't want me to be no, on against no, no, the wall no. and shop, yeah, 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 but there yeah, are yeah. so many people out there in niche which say, oh no, it's me the perfumer, I made right, it. Right, right, it's true. And th this is what I can't stand. It, it doesn't bother me as much, but I know, I understand why people don't like it, but like, I can tell you why I don't like it, because it's a really, really tough job. It's just as you said, if you, we would make a demonstration, if we go to a lab and we sit there and we write down, and then we do, put it all together, a few drops, it looks so easy, everybody goes, well, I can do that, no. Shaking it up is totally fine. I, I think one of the problems is, if you are a self-taught perfumer who breaks the rules, like uh, the, the law, the, they're not laws, the regulations of over usage of stuff, right? You can't, it's, it's comparing apples to oranges. I can make the best perfume in the world with 30% jasmine in it, you know, anyone can, but it's not legal, you know? And so if the, if the line has all this, all this stuff, right, that, that we're not, no longer allowed to use, and you're comparing it to, to other people, then it becomes a non-even playing field. It's like steroids in sports or something, you know? Um, moving on to another question. Um, Experimentation, sometimes you just need 10 materials, stuff you know really well. Sometimes you might get excited by something that comes into your palette that's new. How do you hear about new things, new cool molecules to play with or new naturals that are coming in? Is it serendipity? Do you go out sort of to find them? I know if you're in a big fragrance house internally, they try and sell them to you and go like, sure. try this out. Mark, how do you survey the scene? As you just said, like we just had the, um, the perfumery raw material uh, congress in Paris last week, where all the companies, a lot around naturals, present their new products, what they have, chemicals as well. If not, you have the perfumers, um, what you call, work, world uh, congress every two years where they present also yeah. uh, new chemicals, or which very often big companies, if they have a captive, they keep it for five, 10 years, and then they bring it out, then you can yeah. work with it. So that's how you get to know it. Or mouth propaganda, you know, when you're talking propaganda. with friends. Uh, oh, I like it. And yeah, what what you know, did you smell at the last event that made you go, oh, wow? Was well, there, anything, um, or were you... there was um, a new cinnamon absolute, which I thought was very, very delicate. I mean, it's not a very easy product to work with cinnamon. But if you smell it, the absolute against the oil, I thought that was really uh, something cool. I smelled a new um, vetiver, a DM, from uh, Payon, which was um, based where they pushed the vetiver oil aspect uh, to the maximum in there, which was so powerful, so clean, so grapefruity, so didn't have this dirty, earthy... Who makes it? Yeah. Who makes it? Uh, uh, Payon, Bertrand. And David, one, one material that you are obsessed with at the moment, to finish off. Sure. Uh, sort of fueling so, new experimentation. There's so many of them. Uh, well, I just told you that I just used this Violif in something, the IFF, like, sort of violet nitrile thing. The Amber Extreme is really new, and that one's really, that's exciting because it is powerful. It's insane. Think, yeah. But I just started working with uh, Fermanish and there's a bunch of materials there that that's I had never That's the one from IFF, no? Armbar Extreme? Yeah, that's IFF. Is it IFF? Yeah. But this proves, I think, that perfumers getting geeky and talking about ingredients, we do want to know. We that's interesting, I yeah. think. Yeah. Sure. That um, is interesting, and yeah. that's what we don't do anymore, well, perfumers we'll do amongst more. each other. They perfumers don't talk, talk they don't yeah. communicate about this. That's why I have perhaps 
two or three perfumer friends, which I trust, and we see each other regularly. And we sit down, we have a drink, we have a smoke, and we discuss this, and it can go through all night. We don't give a shit, and that's what is important. Exchanging information and, you know, experience how certain materials can work, etc. And that's what I find it's is interesting. Resistance. But Maybe in the industry, you nobody gives you this. Yeah. There we go, a new relationship is formed. By the way, lots of perfumers smoking. What a shocker. That's another. Oh, <laughs> so that's who knew. I, yeah. I think it's six yeah. drugs, rock and roll. Okay. Yeah, Cheddar Point Perfume that. gave people this idea of what a perfumer does, but it's yeah. not true. It's you can't have spicy really food and all this bullshit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We all walk around with plastic gloves yeah. and yeah. thing and a white okay. gun. No, yeah. no, no, right. no, we'll we'll go for a curry then. I mean, so we don't you. smoke in the office. Huh? That <laughs> yeah. is forbidden, of course. Yeah. Thank you so much, you two. It's been so great talking to you. Carry on talking about. Um, Umber Extreme in your own time. Thank we'll you. see you tonight. See you later. All right, great. Bye. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you.